Good morning and welcome to our studio. You're broadcasting live from TVRI World. This is Breaking News and I'm Siska Becker. And I'm Stephanie Silitonga. We will be giving you updates on the tension, the rising tension in Gaza since the first attack on October 7. And in the following hours, we will also provide you with comprehensive updates on the situation in the region and we will also have live reports on the march supporting Palestinians at the National Monument or Monasi Jakarta. Yes, that's right, Stephanie. And later we'll also be discussing on the issue with our guest, Middle East Observer, Payon Mahmoudi, PhD, and Bagus Hendranin Kobarshi, Director of Middle Eastern Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That's correct, Siska. We know that the Indonesian government have sent the first phase of humanitarian to Palestine on Saturday, which is yesterday. We'll also be speaking to a member of Presidium of Mercy Indonesia, Dr. Arif Rahman, later to know more on the mechanism of humanitarian and distributions to Palestinians in Gaza. And now let's begin with our first report. President Joko Widodo reiterates Indonesia's position that the country will always stand with Palestine. President Joko Widodo, on behalf of the Indonesian government, dispatched the first batch of humanitarian assistance to Palestine Saturday morning. The humanitarian aid was flown from Halim Perdana Kusuma Airport in East Jakarta. President Jokowi said humanitarian aid weighed more than 50 tons carried by three Hercules aircraft. The aid packages have come not only from the Indonesian government, but also from donations from various social and charity organizations in Indonesia. The president also reiterated Indonesia's stance in supporting Palestinian independence, condemning Israel's actions, and urging it to immediately stop the war and humanitarian tragedy in Gaza. The humanitarian aid is scheduled to arrive in Egypt on Monday local time and it will be forwarded to Gaza Strip through the International Committee of the Red Cross ICRC. The aid includes food, medical equipment, winter necessities, and other essential items. President Joko Widodo led the dispatch of the first batch of humanitarian assistance for Palestine at Halim Perdana Kusuma Airport Saturday morning. A total of 51.5 tons of aid packages has been delivered to Palestine on its way to Gaza through Egypt. Speaking at Halim Perdana Kusuma Airport, President Joko Widodo said Indonesia dispatched the first batch of humanitarian aid for the Palestinian people. The humanitarian aid weighed 51 and a half tons and were transported by two Hercules aircraft. The president cited the humanitarian aid consists of food supplies, medical equipment, blankets, tents and other logistic items that have been tailored to the Palestinian needs. The humanitarian assistance was dispatched to El Arish airport in Egypt and will be further transported and distributed to Gaza. President Joko Widodo explained the aid came from the Indonesian government, the public, and also corporations which is distributed through various humanitarian organizations such as the National Zakat Agency or BASNAS, Indonesian Humanitarian Alliance or IHA, Indonesian Red Cross or PMI, Kitabisa, as well as TNI and the National Police. The Indonesian president expressed hope to be able to deliver more assistance from the public and corporations soon. President Joko Widodo also said the next dispatch of aid for Palestine is currently being prepared. He said this aid delivery is evidence of Indonesia's solidarity with Palestinian people and concern of Indonesian nation for humanity. He maintained the humanitarian tragedy in Gaza is unacceptable and must be stopped as soon as possible. The president reaffirmed Indonesia will always stand with Palestine. 
In Jakarta, a number of community members, including leaders of interfaith organizations and the country's ulama council, initiated a mass rally to support Palestine. The action takes place at the National Monument or Monas compound this morning. The Indonesian Ulema Council holds a rally to defend Palestine at the National Monument in central Jakarta this morning. Some 3,000 people, including those from civil organizations, are participating in the action. A number of interfaith figures delivered their speeches during the peaceful rally organized by the Indonesian People's Alliance. And senior member of the Indonesian Ulema Council, Holil Nafi, said the mass gathering which aims to defend Palestine is part of previous series of similar actions. He said the pro-Palestinian rally on Sunday is also a response to same actions taking place in a number of other countries in the world. He added, like other nations in the world, Indonesia opposes against Israeli aggression. Indonesians have strongly condemned Israeli aggressions on Palestine. The Indonesian Alema Council, or MUI, is holding a solidarity rally at Mona Square this morning in their show to support Palestine. And So Indonesians of different religious backgrounds show their support for Palestine in mass rally today. A day earlier, Indonesia has sent humanitarian assistance for Palestinians affected by the Hamas-Israel ongoing conflict in Gaza with President Joko Widodo officially releasing the aid packages at the Halim Perdana Kusuma Airport yesterday in Jakarta and to get comments and of course know more about the rally today and the Israel-Palestine conflict. We will talk with Bapak Yon Mahmudi, PhD, Head of Middle Eastern and Islamic Program, University Indonesia, this morning. Good morning, Pak Yon. Good morning and welcome. Morning. Thank you so much for dropping by our studio so early Thank in the you. morning. We yeah. truly appreciate it. No worries. Now, Pak Yon, we are here, of course, to provide live coverage to our viewers yeah. about the mass rally that is taking place uh, in the heart of our capital at Monas compound. Uh, I hear that they're expecting two to even three million people joining the rally today mm -hmm. to show our solidarity to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Maybe you can give us your assessment and your take on this mass rally happening in Jakarta today. Yeah, I think this uh, rally is very important for Indonesian people to show to the international public that the Indonesian people and the government is, you know, hand in hand to support the Palestinian struggle. So we have never, you know, um, uh, stopped our uh, supporting, defending the uh, Palestinian uh, independence that they have to uh, achieve. So the rally and the sign of the solidarity of the Indonesian is not only done by the uh, certain religious uh, yeah. people, like uh, this uh, right now is you know uh, initiated by the the ulama council of indonesia but also the interfaith groups yeah. uh, belong to the other religious followers also join to show their empathy their solidarity to the um, palestinian people so this is the problem of the humanity that everybody every citizen of this earth should you know uh, know and understand about this strategy. So I think the Indonesian people want to show their stand, very firm stand to the uh, Palestinian sake to achieve the independence. Okay. Now, of course, actually in uh, Indonesia, Jakarta is not the first place where we see huge rallies, mass demonstrations happening across the world ever since uh, Israeli aggression started. Uh, you know, in response yeah. to the Hamas attack on October 7th. But even in the U.S., big cities in the U.S. where we know the government has been a staunch supporter of Israel, but even there we see mass rallies all saying not in our names. They uh, are calling for ceasefires, for Israeli to hold back, giving some humanitarian resistance mm -hmm. to the uh, Palestinians. 
What do you make of this, uh, Pak Yon, to see yes. such strong support yes. globally yes, uh, for sure. Palestinians? Yeah, I think the Indonesians uh, support the rally and solidarity is only one of the example how the international publics uh, pay attention to this uh, tragedy. If you also mention what happened in United States, yeah. also in Britain, in London, yes, the in huge European yeah, countries as yeah, well. European country that the government likely to support the Israel, but yeah. the public are very aware about mm. this uh, tragedy, then they say that this is the real, uh, I mean, intention to show their empathy to the humanity. For instance, yeah. this is, uh, we can see how is the double standard of the government in the Europe of the UA in uh, looking at the, the humanity problem. As we see the case of the uh, Russian-Ukraine uh, war, yeah. when the Ukraine, you know, got the casualties, the dead, you know, numbers, yeah. probably 10, 20, then become, you know, 100, then the immediately the government, the, the, the country of the European, the US, give very, very uh, strong condemn on yeah. the, um, uh, the issue. But when the same tragedy in uh, Gaza, uh, the number of the casualties, the death toll, you know, almost the same as what happened in Ukraine. The Ukraine take time about two years, but here, not uh, less, I think less than one month, the total of the dead person, the baby, the woman, the children, yeah. the civilians, almost the same with the, the Ukraine victim, yeah. but the condemnation. In, in, in a much shorter time yeah, span. Yeah, shorter time, yeah. but we have not heard the you know the, the strong condemnation as yeah. the same as the what they uh, you know uh, give uh, the condemn to the uh, Ukraine victims so um, the public really know that this is not fair to yeah. see how we can see the real tragedy the same tragedy but the very uh, different uh, response even though then uh, US send the, 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 the support here. Yeah. Excuse me, Payon, we're just going to switch to yes, our sir. live feed from, from Mona Square as we're seeing a huge number of people now have congregated there. Let's, let's have a yeah. look first. Ustaz Hidayah Nur Wahid, Ibu Puan Maharani, Ketua DPR RI, Mewakili DPD RI, Ibu Silvia Murni. Mewakili Menteri Kabinet, Mitra Kerja Kita, Ibu yang sangat vokal di dunia internasional, Ibu Retno Marsudi. Kita doakan semoga beliau tetap sehat walafiat dan tegar untuk memperjuangkan saudara-saudara kita di Palestina untuk merdeka dan berdaulat. Pak Muhajir Effendi, Pengko PMK, beliau langsung telepon kepada saya untuk hadir sebagai bentuk komitmen untuk membela saudara-saudara kita di Palestina. Bapak Menteri Agama, terima kasih. Semoga Bapak Menteri Agama tetap konsisten di jalan yang benar memperjuangkan saudara-saudara kita di Palestina. Pimpinan MUI ada Buya Anwar Abbas yang senantiasa menyemangati kita semua. Senior kita pemerkarsa saya panggil senior beliau, Profesor Din Samsudin, mantan Ketua PP Muhammadiyah dan Ketua Majelis Ulama Indonesia. Yang sogianya 10 November kita lakukan perhelatan semacam ini, tapi beliau bilang lebih cepat lebih baik. Ini moto yang disebut sebut Pak JK ini biasa. Bapak Ibu hadir sekalian, rekan-rekan mewakili agama. Dan semua yang hadir mohon maaf tidak menyebutkan satu persatu Tanpa mengurangi rasa hormat saya kepada semua yang hadir Bapak Ibu sekalian, mengapa kita perlu berkumpul di lapangan Monas ini? 
Karena kita ingin bersatu Karena ingin kita membela hak-hak Asasi manusia Hak yang paling asasi Untuk merdeka dan berdaulat Karena itu Pertemuan kita di Monas ini adalah merupakan bahagian dari Kepedulian kemanusiaan Dan kepedulian untuk mendukung Saudara-saudara kita di Palestine Untuk merdeka dan berdaulat Kalau kita mau menang Kita harus kuat Kalau kita mau kuat Kita harus bersatu Dan kalau kita mau bersatu Kita harus terus Berkumpul bersilaturahim Untuk mempers menyelesaikan Persoalan-persoalan Bangsa dan semua Negara-negara yang ada di dunia Alright, as we actually Already yeah. seen our um, Minister for Foreign Affairs Of Indonesia, Ibu Retno Marsudi Also attended um, the event Today, so um, From the mass, like Siska already also mentioned, the target for the mass today will be around like two until three million people attending the event. So, what message do you think, Pak, um, the mass rally sent towards Israel and the Israel-Palestine conflict? As we already heard also the speech. Yeah, um, of of course, the Israeli will, uh, you know, take the attention from the public to to attend to show their uh, support to the Palestinian mm -hmm. that coming from. Uh, different backgrounds and we also see that the some uh, public figure the minister also came to the uh, rally we see also Ibu Retno Marsudi the, uh, his figure is very you know well very well known in the yeah. international um, uh, arena in terms of uh, defending the Palestinian uh, because uh, at the time there is know that very strong yeah? no single country that's as strong as indonesia always to use the every moment to show the commitment to support the uh, palestinian uh, struggle and burat no i think she is the the very brief yeah, woman that have a significant role to bring the issue of palestinian to the attention and the support and the, the message yeah, of the gathering i think very important to, to show the the empathy of the tragedy to you know give a message to the public indonesian public and international public yeah, that uh, the humanity tragedy should be uh, considered regardless of their ethnicity the uh, the nation also the, the religion so uh, anything uh, happen yeah, to the human beings that will cause the violation of the human rights so we have to uh, come and stand for that sake so this is very um important i think okay now payon as you mentioned uh, ibu retno marsudi our foreign minister has been actually quite vocal uh, on the global stage in saying how uneven the playing field is between israel and palestine and that palestine is actually really suffering under mm. the massive assault the aggressive military assault done by israel he she spoke at the un not too long ago mm -hmm. uh, reiterating indonesia's position in support of palestine and also mentioning that the root cause of this ongoing right. never-ending conflict is the occupation of israel yeah. and that is actually what the people rallying around the world is also saying yeah. at the same time but as we see although those mass demonstrations are happening around the world it hasn't dampened the the yeah. might of israel still pounding yeah. palestine uh, especially gaza the gaza strip into the ground now how do you think is uh, this mass rallies uh, effective in delivering those messages that that are being said by world leaders and uh, public around the world yeah it is i think very uh, essential to back to the, the the root of the problems between the is israelis and palestinian uh, conflict that is the occupation so if we come to this issue then we need to solve the problem so we don't okay. just only come to the attack then we condemn the attack but we need to uh, you know uh, come back to the uh, root of the problem because if we do not 
uh, resolve this problem, then the next tra uh, tragedy in the future will happen. Will happen okay. at the same uh, cause and the same uh, problem. This is kind of cycle. Yeah. So then, uh, very important for the public to understand that. Then the message also will come to the leaders that have uh, power to decide what should they do for you know uh, to save the the human beings and also to save the uh, the dignity of you a human being. And we see that because of this rally happened in the U.S. in the European country, yeah. then there is little bit changing of the the psyche of the you know understanding what happened what really happened so before you know like united states give kind of the blind support yeah yes, what unconditional, they support. unconditional support yeah to the to the um israel yeah. uh, at any cost yeah they, uh, they will support but then the public criticize the okay. leaders and they say that uh you know how they you use our taxpayer you know mm. payment yeah to support the Israel, then the yeah. Israel kill the human being, yeah, civilians. The civilians. Mm -hmm. So the United States uh, citizen also now, you know, facing kind of the economic difficulty. So yeah. you prefer, you know, to save your people or, you know, just to give all the money, uh, send uh, back, you know, uh, the, the Israel. So there is kind of the uh, divided uh, support to the Israel. It's not very solid. Okay. But no, a yeah, little, little bit uh, shake because you know there, there is also some the public uh, from the uh, uh, state uh, minister you know that uh, in charge of sending arm to the middle is also resigned because there is nothing you know can do with this very uh, complicated issue. But the moral cannot stand anymore, you know, okay. to uh, support this thing. So the rally uh, in Indonesia. All you know throughout the world is very uh, important to push the uh, awareness and to bring back the ra our rationality uh, to uh, support the only thing is the uh, dignity, the freedom of the human beings. Right, yeah. All right. Okay, Payan, we will continue our yeah. conversation with you shortly, but now we have another news item yeah. to tell our viewers. Stephanie? Indonesia strongly condemned Israel aggression. Aggression on Palestine, the Indonesian Alema Council or MUI is holding a solidarity rally at Mona Square this morning in the show to support Palestine. UI Holil Nafi said on Friday the Indonesian people strongly condemned Israeli attack on Palestine and wanted to see peace in Palestine in the immediate time. Khalil Nafi said a planned rally on Sunday aims at condemning Israeli attack, the movement would demand to end the attack on Palestine and call for a ceasefire. The Israeli attack has killed many civilians, children, women, many more lives. The rally to defend Palestine aims to ending Israeli and Palestine conflict and create peace in the region. Apart from this, the rally also aims to raise funds for Palestinians impacted by attacks. Holil said funds collected from the activity would be delivered to victims in Palestine. The police has prepared personnel to secure the Palestine Solidarity Rally at Monas, Central Jakarta, Sunday morning. Central Jakarta Metro Police and Jakarta Metro Jaya Police has prepared personnel <coughs> to secure the Palestine Solidarity Rally in Monas, Central Jakarta, today. Central Jakarta Metro Police Chief Senior Commissioner Susatyo Purnomo did not provide details on personnel deployed, but emphasized all personnel will ensure a smooth rally. The anti-terrorism unit Densus 88 also asked people to be careful during the rally and reminded that the event should not open chances for intruders to steal the show. The rally was organized by Indonesian Ulema Council or MUI and it is estimated that around 3 million people will be taking part in the rally in their show of solidarity for Palestine.
National Police Anti-Terrorism Unit Densus 88 raised vigilance on certain groups that may use the Palestine Solidarity Rally at Monas today as one raising for terrorism activities. Spokesperson of Anti-Terrorism Unit Densus 88 Senior Commissioner Aswin Siregar said in Jakarta on Friday that his unit has raised alertness on terrorist groups infiltrating the rally to raise funds for their activity. According to Aswin, his unit found humanitarian funds being sent to terrorist groups which spread provocations and propaganda about the oppressions on Muslims and ignorance of authorities. Aswin advised people to be aware on any donations collections activity at the event and to ensure the donation is not for terrorist groups. And now we go back to our guests this morning, Bayon Mahmoudi, Head of Middle Eastern and Islamic Program from the University of Indonesia. Now, Bayon, yeah. uh, we have to realize that this is not the first time we hear about another clash between Israel and Hamas. And this is not the first rallies and big demonstration that we've seen also happening in Indonesia and around the world. Since we have you the head of Middle Eastern uh, Department at the University of Indonesia. Maybe you can share with us your perspective and your knowledge about the latest clash that happened, the one that was started by Hamas on October 7th. Maybe you can tell us more about what actually prompted that attack. So give us some yeah. context. But what is different about this clash uh, compared to the other ones that we've seen before? Yeah, I think this is the... Uh it was the 7 October attack by the Hamas was the, the biggest yeah, attack yeah. comparing to the other attacks and also war between the uh, Israel and the Palestinian. Since uh, 1973, considered to be the biggest uh, war yeah. that you know uh, become uh, attention of the international uh, public, then uh, of course, uh, this is the problem that we have to underline what is the really uh, problem and cause this uh, kind of the uh, conflict. Yeah. And we uh, international or some probably the Indonesian people do not really know what really happened in the Palestinian day and day. Okay. So they say that, oh, everything is fine, no problem, mm -hmm. but if we see and come to the uh, occupied land in the West Bank and okay. also Gaza, we will feel that there is something that also you know, cause our heart, you know, feel very sorry what ha mm -hmm. really happened in that uh, area. This okay. is the area what we call the occupied land, mm -hmm. the area when every day there is, there are many cause of this, the death uh, involving, you know, the Palestinian people because of the new settlement, you know, okay. any kind of the movement of the new settlement also bring the army to back up the settlement yeah. and whoever you know defend the right defend their land defend their home will you know uh face the the uh the um yeah, yeah they will be severely punished yes they're severely yeah. punished even yeah. that you know because yeah. the the settlers is not as the uh common people in yes. general because they are also occupied with the arm whatever mm -hmm. you know can Although happen the, the un has said repeatedly that you know, increasing settlements in the awkward area is actually illegal yeah. by international law. By the international law yeah. is legal, but by the the Israel's law is is legal mm. because part of their struggle to achieve the the homeland, the okay. promised land, that yeah. according to their law is uh, comprised the uh, the area of the West Bank and the Gaza. So the, okay. they claim this is part of their land, and that's why the annexation every day is happen so mm -hmm. through the settlement okay. then uh, also the apartheid system i have the supervisor who uh, my former supervisor who teach uh, i think the last uh, last years in one of the uh, uh, israelis uh, university and he uh, told me that this is a very sad uh, situation so everyone who came to that area will feel very uh, said very sorry. Uh, for instance, you know, in uh, you know area of the Al Aqsa, there is uh, the compound of the uh, neighborhoods. Yeah, okay. consists of the the Palestinian who stay there and some also Israelis who stay in that area close to the um, Al Aqsa. But the the regulation is very different. 
for okay. the Palestinian people who live in that area for years and even uh, before, you know, for the centuries probably because their generation stayed there, but because of that, you know, apartheid system. So any, uh, you know, kind of uh, need to uh, to restore the building okay. should report to the Israeli authority. Mm. Even the Palestinians are not allowed to uh, install the uh, air conditioning. Yeah. You know that how hot is living in that area. Yeah. But for the Israeli settlement in the same area, they are allowed to the, uh, have the air conditioning. Okay. So there is also, they say that there is also many uh, flyers put in the neighborhoods mm. that mention treat them to live. It means that mm. treat whatever you can do in order to make the Palestinian yeah. in living in very hard situation okay. can condition so they can leave this uh, uh, what the compound you know yeah. of the, um, the, the the neighborhood so um, even the Palestinian who study abroad you know assisted by the European other than come back this they are frustrated okay. seeing what really happened no future okay. uh, but they see the authority of Palestinian uh, that you know have close with relations with the Israel are the very okay. corrupted. So the one who's taking control of the West Bank yeah, area. Yeah. So okay. kind of something that no hope to live mm. in uh, you know in Palestinian. Okay. So the only way is the resistance to resist what really happened. Well, we need to change the situation. Okay. But the Israel said, oh, everything is fine. United States also. Uh, criticized but uh, this is very yeah, normal nothing substantial yeah, is done not substantial, but yeah. every day if we you know uh, put together the death toll of the 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 uh, cost by the settlement i think reach 100 or even 1000 in the years but we are not realized this thing so then the hamas you know mm. uh, try to you know wake up the attention of the public yeah. because the us and israels say that we, we need to have the normalized the relationship with the, our neighbors, the okay. Arab country. Okay. But the inside, the condition is not normal, the mm. abnormal situation. Mm. Okay. So the issue is, I think it's better to have the, the normal situation relations, then you can have the normalization with your neighbors. But in the inside, I think the apartheid system, okay. discriminative and you know, very hard living there. And the Gaza is kind of jail. Yeah? The, it's, the, a, it's an open air prison. That's yeah, what people are calling prisons, it. Yeah, yeah. Prison, then there is no access. Yeah. Like it's heavily blockaded. blockaded it's guarded. guarded it's and yeah, everything. So how can people live, you know, years there okay. without any support? Even very hard to find the medical, uh, you know, uh, yeah, then okay. economic, you know, stop yeah. because of this uh, problem so we see then the hamas took initiative you know, okay. to bring this issue but also the the impact very um you know um very big you know yeah. cause of this uh, in the israels and also right now what we see in um palestinian people mm -hmm. but through this i think tragedy uh, the, the 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 world i think the great power should learn and take immediate action not discuss all this the tragedy will go further mm -hmm. and we will regret uh, this situation in the future okay so what you're saying uh hamas's attack on october 7th was actually a sort of military response after decades of military occupation military oppression by israel but a lot of people are saying, why did Hamas do that? Because in retaliation, Israel was only going to be destroying Palestine and Gaza yeah. and even civilians, as we are seeing that happening right now. Why did they did that, knowing that lots of people are going to be killed and even maybe their cause on having a free Palestine will be hurt by that very uh, thing that they're doing? Yeah, I think because <clears throat> there is no hope for them. Because the issue of the independent two-state solution now never talk in the international level. Okay. The only country who talk about the two-state solution very strong is Indonesia. Mm. But there is no response. Even the, uh, the Israel, the, the Prime Minister Netanyahu said that there is no 
kind of uh, word of the independent and state for the Palestinians. So everything is close. Okay. And the situation is, you know, um, a very bad condition. So they realize that everybody, the, every day, the people of the Palestine will die soon or later. But they say that we need to take the action because we don't want, they don't want to die yeah, okay. in humiliation. So they mm. say that we want to die to achieve the independence, okay. not humiliated because, you know, the strategy of the Israel is to remove all the, the Palestinians, yeah, demoralize, demoralize, this, demoralize of this thing, then yeah, it's better to take the, um, uh, the action because uh, the, the independence will not be given voluntarily. Okay. So they have to uh, ask and to, you know, to take the action to get, you know, okay. the um, independent and also to wake up the, the, the international to be very objective, yeah, to see the, um, uh, really what is the, the solution. Mm -hmm. Because any agreement uh, between the international regarding the issue of the Israel-Palestine is never touch the issue of the the Palestinians always okay. only uh, only the peace agreement between the Israel and Jordan peace agreement between Israel and Egypt okay. and the Arab Saudi but never touch the issue yeah. of the real issue of the okay. Palestinian okay Ayon, thank you so much for giving us historical context and shed so much light on this latest clash mm -hmm. between Israel and Palestine we're gonna discuss further uh, we would love to talk more about okay. the two state solutions and maybe we'll get more visuals from Mona Square, but for now we'll take a short break. Don't go anywhere. Breaking news on TV, RY World will return shortly. Welcome back to our breaking news on TV RI World. Still with me, Siska Becker, my partner, Stephanie Silitonga. And also, not only we have our guest, Pak Yon Mahmoudi from University of Indonesia, now we are also joined by another guest who has made his way into our studio. We have Dr. Arif Rahman, member and presidium of Mercy Indonesia. Dr. Arif, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, so we're now going to continue our conversation now yeah. that we have also Dr. Arif with us. Maybe we can first ask how's the Mercy volunteers, especially the ones from Indonesia, are doing now uh, in Palestine. We've been hearing some updates about uh, efforts and attempts of evacuation, but there are several members who have refused evacuation. Is that true, Dr. Arif? Yeah, uh, thanks to Allah that uh, our three volunteers inside Gaza Strip still uh, in a good condition. Although uh, with uh, the latest uh, video conference with them, they look uh, very tired. Mm. We can uh, understand that since yeah. maybe they are lacking in uh, some rest since, okay. you know, the sound of the assault is uh, keep happen yeah. in the proximity near the hospital. Okay. So it's quite uh, understandable. Yeah. But uh, they report that they're in a good condition. They still uh, can manage several issues like uh, for uh, food supply mm -hmm. and for their uh, personal uh, need. Okay. Uh, and uh, per the institutional instruction, we order them to stay inside the oh, Gaza Strip. Okay. So uh, we believe, we believe through uh, many experience uh, before that uh, in the in the hospital compound is the safest location mm -hmm. while the uh, attack or the assault is happen mm -hmm. and uh, we also need them to go to with our uh, humanitarian aid so okay. uh, now the uh, uh, hospital in uh, in in a dire situation they need medical supplies they need fuel they need everything to keep the op uh, the the hospital operation okay and uh, Nobody is it still operating right now, the hospital? Yeah, in, 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 in minimum service. Oh. Since uh, we already know uh, by the uh, 
statement from the uh, director hospital uh, they state that with the with the uh, uh, the uh, amount of fuel they have now mm -hmm. it would be not possible to operate the hospital <coughs> in the fuel uh, okay. service mm -hmm. so they only can operate with minimum capacity for the most most uh, needed part like ICU, okay. uh, operating theater, uh, emergency, and so on and so on. So uh, maybe we can say that the, the level of service of uh, Indian hospital now already decreased uh, until maybe uh, 30 or even more 40 percent from its uh, fuel uh, capacity. Okay, so without doubt, fuel is one of the most uh thing that is needed yes. right now in it's Gaza warranty. but Israel is not letting fuel in they're not letting a shipment of fuels in or even oxygen tanks I hear so how are you going to cope with the lack of fuel f to be able to yeah. do the operations uh, uh, effectively our volunteer managed to find the uh, supplier of fuel okay but the main problem is how to transport from mm -hmm. the storage tank to the hospital because with standard uh, transportation it will be impossible. We cannot imagine when you deliver the fuel with, with the uh, standard uh, transportation and yeah. uh, attack happen, it will be catastrophic. Mm. Okay. Right. okay. Yeah. Dr. Arif, we will continue later, but for now we will um, hear from our colleague there in Monas, the current situation, the, the updated conditions from Shafira from Monas. Hello, good morning, Shafira. Good morning, Shafira. Go ahead. Um, today's demonstration is estimated to be attended by two million people. The people coming here are wearing um, mostly white clothes with uh, banners and Palestine flags and also Indonesian flags. The demonstration started at 6 a.m. Jakarta time with the recitation of Holy Quran followed with singing of Indonesia's national anthem Indonesia Raya. And here people of all ages um, backgrounds coming together and there are slogans and heartfelt messages each one has they are here to support uh, to speak with several people here before and today their messages okay Stephanie, sorry Shafira it seems that we're having a, a bit of a connection issue we'll try to get in touch with you later on in the meantime we'll continue our conversation Dr. Arif uh, we would love to get your take on the mass rally that is happening today in Jakarta expected to attract two million participants what do you think of this will, will this help the cause of the Palestinians yeah. I think the situation now is uh, to show that <coughs> Indonesia already joined the giant wave yeah. uh, of the, uh, the global international support, issue, yeah. global support for Palestine. The Palestinian issue is not uh, only about the fighting between Hamas and Israeli, but okay. it's uh, getting more into humanitarian issue. Yeah. We're talking about uh, two million people trapped inside Gaza Strip yeah. uh, with, uh, with, with respect of the uh, martyr and injured people. Mm. We're talking about two million people now in Gaza facing the winter. Mm. You can imagine their, their, their home destroyed without food supply, yeah. without heater. Mm. And now in November, they are facing winter. It will be a second disaster for them. And if the international aid cannot action right now it will be more bigger victim rather than the uh, war itself yeah even the united nations have said that there is a humanitarian catastrophe mm -hmm. happening in gaza strip right, right now and mm -hmm. the international community needs to take action now before yeah. we continue we want to take our viewers back to mona square mm -hmm. i think we had some visuals earlier to show you okay i think we're still uh, looking for that visual yes. to show 
But let's continue our conversation then. Yeah. Now, in regards with what is happening right now with electricity being mm -hmm. cut off, right. water yeah. supply being cut off, no food supply, and at the same time, the Israeli military forces mm -hmm. keep on the aggressive assault on Palestinians, even civilians. We've seen the attacks on residential buildings, on hospital, even refugee camps. Mm -hmm. Why so aggressive? Why the determination from the Israeli military, even with all the pressure from international communities? The UN has put out a resolution that Israel has completely ignored. Maybe you can give us some insights on what is actually happening in the Gaza Strip that has made Israel uh, so determined, it seems, to uh, put, put this conflict to a brutal end, if I might say so. Yeah, for Israeli... Uh, the uh, assault itself is not uh, like it's not have its own target. I mean, mm. it's rather than routine for Israeli. Okay. You have attack every year mm. with different mm. scale. Mm -hmm. Okay. The the latest uh, largest attack was in 2009 and then 2014. Yeah. And now 2023. Yeah. Uh, with more increase in uh, martyr and mm -hmm. injured people. But we just understand that uh, Israelis uh, feel like, in, in, in my assumption, they feel safe since there's no international path could punish them. Mm. Mm. You're talking in the okay. UN, they have back up with the US. Yeah. Whatever resolution is proposed, the US will feed to them. Okay. Okay. We're talking about the Arab country. There's no uh, actual action to prevent this war into large scale. Mm. Uh, war itself needs every supply from everywhere. We're talking, if we compare between the Ukraine and <coughs> Russian war to the uh, Hamas and Israeli uh, war right now, yeah. it's like we have a double face, mm -hmm. double standard. Double standard, okay. Yeah. okay? Yeah. So, talking about Israelis, talking about anomaly. Mm. We cannot use standard law, we cannot use standard norm if we will discuss the issue with them itself. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, as you mentioned, the situation is getting worse and the devastation mm -hmm. cost is even greater now, right? So, um, how long do you think this conflict will likely to last? For Israelis to depend on their uh, resource itself, uh, I believe uh, with the last uh, experience, they will no longer than two months. Mm. Either the uh, cease of fire okay. or anything happened outside, I mean the international cooperation, something like that. And also the uh, Hamas capacity itself will be no in, no, no, have no power to, mm. to continue the struggle. So it uh, nearing the one month. Okay, since uh, the 7th October. Yes. And uh, even for the 2015, I believe uh, the, the situation that uh, that time is no longer than uh, three weeks, I believe. Okay. So getting war into more than one month, I believe will be ex house for the both parties. Okay. All right. right. Now, before we continue uh, with our discussion with Pak Yon as well, let's try to have a look now mm -hmm. at the situation at the Mona Square to see how the people have congregated there to join at the mass rally. We're looking at some visuals. I think this is a recording from the previous, the previous agenda. Yeah. Now, this is actually live, live feed from mm. Mona Square. This is happening. We can see. Okay, let's, let's have a listen. Agar manfaat solawat bisa memperkuat doa kita. Agar doa-doa kita seluruh rakyat Indonesia, terutama yang 2 juta hadir di Monas ini, dikabulkan oleh Allah SWT segera. Agar Palestina lepas dari penderitaan yang berkepanjangan. Oke, kita sholat bersama. Bisa musiknya. Assalamualaikum. Semuanya. Assalamualaikum. 
রক্ষত আইনা শাহুকন ফলিত The festivities are underway for the pro-Palestine rally. We just yeah. saw there uh, how the, the mass is the really mass fired is. up to show their solidarity. We also see the foreign minister, mm -hmm. Ibu Ratno Marsudi, mm -hmm. the speaker of the House of the Representatives, Ibu Puan Maharani, and yeah. also religious minister, Yakut Khalil Kumas. But now we're going to try to connect, connect. again with Shafira Junior, TV RR World's reporter, to get an update of the mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. Shafira, can you hear us? Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, Siska and Stefani. Is my uh, is my audio clear? Can you hear me? It's very clear. Go ahead. Can you hear me? We can hear you clearly. Okay. Right. Okay. So um, the situation here, there are um, slogans uh, adorned with artworks, with heartful, uh, with heartfelt messages, and also uh, there are some people. Uh, bring, bringing Indonesian, Indonesia's flag, Palestine flags, and also people gather here to express their support for Palestine. And a number of people here. The messages is clear. They are here to a uh, voice. Uh, there is a need to end the injustice, oppression, and attacks. Uh, the ongoing attacks to Palestine and to the Palestinians. Uh, it's really heart heartwarming here because we can see there are uh, donations, uh, truck donations, people, people. Um, people voice uh, their thoughts and their opinions and also um, we can see the of supporting Palestine to the younger generation to foster sense of empathy and social awareness people coming from diverse backgrounds faiths and cultures are here with a very strong and clear message a call for a peaceful resolution and um, we can see that um, I actually now I'm outside of the Monas area because it's kind of crowded uh, inside um, in front of me there are some ambulances to anticipate if there are some people faint because of the demonstration and actually uh, that's what uh, we have for now uh, but I can say that the message uh, here is clear that we don't need to be a Muslim we don't need to be a Palestinian we just need to be human from Mona Square I'm Safira Junior and camera person Arya reporting for TVRI World back to the studio Thank you very much, Shafira Jr. from your report. Please take care. As we see at a very mass rally yeah. today happening at Monas, and we see that um, the message is very clear and very strong. This is a solidarity action. And perhaps we can uh, continue again our conversations previously about the humanitarian assistance. Um, we know that Indonesia yesterday, the government has already sent the humanitarian assistance um, so to these conflict zones. So Dr. Arif, what do you think of Indonesia contributions to this um, humanitarian assistance? Well, uh, through the years, I mean, uh, if you're talking from 2009, uh, when the uh, first Indonesian attempt to deliver the humanitarian assistance uh, through the Minister of Health at that time, and when the Mercy first, time attempt, uh, first attempt to enter the Gaza Strip, now, if you're talking uh, about Indonesian position, especially in Gaza Strip, it's already well known. Before, uh, the, the people inside Gaza will not consider Indonesia. Even they don't, they don't know <coughs> where is Indonesia. Mm. Some people know uh, Indonesia from the uh, Sukarno. Mm. I mean, for the uh, elder people. Yeah. Uh, elder people who, uh, at that time, 
uh, have their privilege to travel to Egypt and they know mm. their uh, Egypt president Gamal Abdel Nasser and then they know that the Gamal Abdel Nasser have uh, friendship with the Indonesian president Sukarno. They know Indonesia through Sukarno. But after that, they didn't know where is Indonesia. But now we're talking about Indonesia. Indonesia has played a major role, especially in a humanitarian inside the Gaza Strip. Why? Because uh, Indonesia plays a different, different action mm -hmm. whenever they send the humanitarian relief. Many countries only send fun, send money, okay. uh, working with local partner, and uh, from outside they receive the report. But Indonesia, they tend to deliver the stuff. They have their own person or in mercy case volunteer to live inside live with the people inside Gaza, not only to do the work. Mm -hmm. So, with this kind of relation, they feel Indonesia as close friend, or rather a brother. Mm -hmm. They call us brother and sister from Indonesia. And as we know that Indonesia is the biggest Muslim country in the world, the relation is getting, getting tighter. Mm -hmm. So, if, if we're talking about Indonesian position, now it's quite big, uh, a big role for the uh, Indonesia to play within the Palestinian issue. Okay, they see us as a significant and strong partner to their cause. Okay, Payon, now back yeah. to you. When we talk about uh, the aid uh, and, of course, humanitarian uh, assistance that they direly need by all the people in Gaza Strip, one of the problems that they face is how that shipment, how that aid is actually really hard to go into the Gaza Strip and to reach the civilians there who actually need them. And at the same time, they also face aggressive military assault from the Israelis. It's so much so that even the U.S. have been softening their statements for the past few days. And we see Secretary Blinken also meeting up with uh, the local leaders in Amman, in mm -hmm. Jordan, for a humanitarian pause to make sure that all this humanitarian aid can go safely into Gaza. And we also hear a few days ago, President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris also saying that there should be respect for international law and for humanitarian causes. What do you make of this, uh, Payon? Would this actually be enough for the Israelis mm -hmm. to finally uh, give some chance for the civilians in Gaza to survive? Yeah, when the, the public, for instance, in the international public, at the U.S., you know, calling for the ceasefire yeah. and say that right now the ceasefire, what is the response of the Biden? The Biden is not the ceasefire, it's the pause, to pause the, yeah. the situation, to yeah. let, you know, the humanitarians yeah. to come. But it also means that to prepare further, you know, uh, mm. chance for the, to, for <laughs> the Israel to rest, then prepare to another attack. So the pause is not the solution. The solution is okay. the ceasefire. So okay. the humanitarians also should be given the guarantee yeah. they're safe. Because when the Israeli uh, uh, government said that we cannot guarantee the journalists, mm -hmm. we cannot guarantee the international, they're safe of the international because they are there. So it means that the, the war is uh, indiscriminated. So target everyone yeah. living in the Gaza. Which is in violation of in, international yeah, of law, the, right? The, in violation of the international law, in violation of the human right. Yeah. That very uh, sad hearing about these uh, things. Then um, the humanity, the dignity of humanity is very important. But okay. then we heard the statement from the Netanyahu and the, and the Minister of Defense say that yeah. we are fighting the, the uh, animal human beings. Yeah. So this is very, you know, um, uh, the, the statement, we have never about these things except the statement during the Nazi mm. in the yeah. Holocaust that they call the, the rat of the people that, you know, like, this is not the, the yeah, human being. Dehumanizing. Be, dehumanizing. Enemy, yeah. So, because they are not considered to be human beings, that they yeah. can do whatever they, they can do. They can kill the baby, they can kill mm. the children, yeah. they can kill, you know, you destroy the, the, um, the mosque, destroy the church, destroy the hospital. And hospitals and everyone. refugee camps. Just yeah. to say that because the enemy hiding inside the building. So you, okay. you, you cannot justify 
this thing in the international law because of you want to kill one person mm -mm. in the building, then you destroy the whole thing. So, yeah, this is very, you know, kind of there is, in terms of the world should be regulations, should the law that you ha we have to consider. So, when we cannot uh, let the humanitarian assistance to in, mm. it means that we just, you know, make them to die. Yeah. There is no food, there is no water, electricity, even the internet. Yeah. You shut down the internet, then you can do whatever you, you, mm. you do, then there is no one can report what really happened. Okay. Then do say that, yes, it is really happened there. Do you think when they ask how many, uh, what do you think about the uh, thousand of children? Then they just repeat, it is really children there? Then just cover their eyes then just do whatever they can then international cannot you know respond very hard you know very hard to suppress them not to do these things uh, then yeah oh, people hopeless about this uh, situation so indonesian i think yeah uh, have a good coordination with the egypt yeah. you know to open the gate to okay. let the hopefully uh, our uh, uh, aid uh, package will come and go to the Gaza and then the Gaza people will get the, yeah. the benefit of our um, assistance to them. Yes, that's yeah. our hopes and wishes. We were told yesterday that in that package there's a lot of uh, winter clothing mm. to help the, mm. the Gazanians, you know, to prepare for cold and yeah, harsh sure, climate yeah. that's coming up next. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Bayon. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion with Dr. Arif as well. But for now, we take a little break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on Breaking yes. News. On Monday, the signal of the December. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ibu Bapak yang saya hormati, atas nama pemerintah Indonesia, kami ingin menegaskan kembali dukungan Indonesia terhadap perjuangan bangsa Palestina. Ibu Bapak kita berkumpul di sini bersatu dari yang bineka untuk menunjukkan solidaritas kita terhadap kemanusiaan dan kemarin bantuan ke Welcome back to TVRI World Breaking News as we today talk about the Hamas-Israel conflict in Gaza, the updates, and we have a very insightful uh, conversations, highlights we get from the experts today with us at TVRI World Studio. And we are going to see what's happening now in, at Monas, and we will hear a statement from Ibu Retno Marsudi. Let's have a look. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ibu Bapak yang saya hormati, atas nama pemerintah Indonesia, kami ingin menegaskan kembali dukungan Indonesia terhadap perjuangan bangsa Palestina. Ibu Bapak kita berkumpul di sini bersatu dari yang bineka untuk menunjukkan solidaritas kita terhadap kemanusiaan. Dan kemarin bantuan tahap pertama sudah diberangkatkan dan dilepas 
langsung oleh Presiden Joko Widodo. Dan ini bukan hanya bantuan dari pemerintah, tetapi dari seluruh masyarakat Indonesia yang disalurkan melalui lembaga-lembaga kemanusiaan. Terima kasih kepada seluruh rakyat Indonesia. Dan bantuan selanjutnya akan dipersiapkan. Ibu Bapak, semalam saya menulis puisi. Apakah boleh puisi ini saya bacakan? Puisi ini judulnya Palestina Saudaraku. Ditulis oleh Retno Marsudi. Hatiku miris karena bocah itu menangis. Dia terluka. Dia tidak bisa berkata, dia tidak tahu di mana bapak ibunya. Setiap sepuluh menit, satu anak wafat di Gaza. Ribuan orang tua kehilangan anak. Tak terbilang berapa ribu anak kehilangan orang tuanya. Setiap tangan tertulis nama. Mereka tidak ingin mati tanpa penanda. Rumah mereka hanya langit. Kasur mereka hanya bumi. Kapan kekejaman ini akan berhenti? Kapan keadilan ini akan menghampiri? Aku dan Indonesiaku pantang mundur akan terus membantumu. Aku dan Indonesiaku akan terus bersamamu sampai penjajah itu enyah dari rumahmu. Palestina, kau adalah saudaraku dan aku, Indonesiaku, akan selalu bersamamu. Demikian Ibu dan Bapak, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Right, so that was a statement and even very touching a poem by our Minister of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia, Ibu Retno Marsudi. Right, Siska? Very heartfelt message mm -hmm. indeed and a beautiful poem. I yes. didn't know that our Foreign Minister has the ability to come up with those beautiful words. Mm -hmm. Very touching and indeed it is what we are happening uh, right now in Gaza and we're going to talk more about the situation uh, in Gaza Strip and about the latest clash between mm -hmm. Israel and Hamas but first we want to welcome okay. our guests who joined us here today joining Payon Mahmoudi and Dr. Arif Rahman we now have Pak Bagus Hendraning Kobarshi Director for Middle Eastern Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Pak Bagus you came directly from Mona Square we truly appreciate that we understand maybe apart from the minister, you are the busiest person right now at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. You have a lot on your plate. So we truly appreciate you coming here to our studio Thank to have a chat nice. with us. Now, since you came directly from Mona Square, maybe you can also give us an update. Yeah. How was the situation? How was the atmosphere? Uh, and how are the feelings of the participants? Well, I think what can I feel from this event is a strong solidarity from the people of Indonesia, especially who's in Jakarta. And they come there voluntarily. And they want to show their support for the Palestinian struggle. And this is the best thing they can do. They pray together and they try to maybe donate some uh, things or some money or some funds, something like that. But uh, I see the spontaneity of the people. It shows that the issue of Palestine is not between the government, mm. 
but also it will include the people of Indonesia, mm -hmm. especially in Jakarta. I know it's not only Jakarta, yeah. it's all of Indonesia, but we can see that in Monas, it's mm -hmm. really, really uh, fantastic. Yeah. I think the involvement of not just government, but also the people was also shown by the humanitarian aid that was yes, released yesterday that's right, that's at right. Halim Prana Kusuma by our president, yes, Joko Widodo. It consists yes. not only, it's not, it wasn't compiled by the government, but also from social organizations. Mm -hmm. like of course, Ambagus. of course, yes. This uh, contribution and social action from uh, many levels of society who, uh, who give all the assistance to any institution there okay. and like the president said this is not the last okay. it will be the another step another batch for this assistance okay so there will be more coming it's yes. very encouraging yes, to yes. hear now on november 1st the ministry of foreign affairs uh, did a press briefing telling us that there will be an evacuation process uh, taking place to evacuate Indonesians from Gaza. Could we get an update on that, uh, Pak Bagus? How is it going? How many more Indonesians are actually now still in Gaza Strip and how safe it is to get them out safely? Yes, this is uh, really a, not an easy job because the situation in Gaza is really disastrous mm. and uh, full of uh, violence. But I heard that the last uh, people have been evacuated is uh, one family, I think, uh, yeah. Mr. Onim family, mm. going out from there, and I think Arif know better about this. Okay. But uh, there are still some uh, Indonesians there, or they are now uh, waiting for uh, uh, evacuated. But uh, we have to know that also there are uh, Indonesian uh, volunteer who choose to stay there uh, because they say that they are there to help the Palestinian people. Uh, this is uh, a mission, the second mission of the, all the volunteer uh, people, volunteer uh, activists that they, they dedicate their time, their uh, capability to help and to give the best to the Palestinian people know who is now very stay in very uh, dire situation, without food, um, uh, water, electricity, and uh, the limited uh, access for medicine, everything. You, it's really uh, very very sad. Yeah. Okay, we can only imagine how hard it must be. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Logistically, it's also hard, mm -hmm. yes. and uh, the yes. human power is also mm -hmm. very lacking right now. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, you are right. Yeah, but because we see that this is like a really massive rally today at Monas, yes. and we would like to know what do you think your comment on this the message that this event, this uh, rally, bring actually on this ongoing conflict between Israel and yes, Palestine. I think like um, uh, the minister say that uh, this is will be the the strong sign that Indonesia will always stand with Palestine. There are many ways to do and to show our support to the Palestine. And one of them is uh, we show it by uh, make some commitment, some uh, calls, and pray, of course, and doa. It is very important as well. But I think most of this uh, event is uh, it will give the positive energy, positive pressure to, to the world especially to the Zionist Israel, that uh, many people now uh, support Palestinian struggle. Yeah. And it is not always about religion. Yeah. This is about the decolonization. Yeah. This is about the human rights. This is about the occupation that uh, should be uh, confronted by everybody in the world who respect the law especially the humanitarian law okay. because no law can agree to bomb hospital yeah. no law can agree to bomb a uh, house with the late uh, woman children inside there are it is not a military uh, installation this is civilian uh, no one can 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 agree with that i think okay
Now, talking about the diplomacy effort from our side, recently yes. Ibu Ratno Marsudi also spoke at the UN. Yes. And we reiterated our strong position, yes. steadfast support for Palestine. Yes. And in that instance, Ibu Ratno Marsudi also repeat again that the root cause of this ongoing never-ending conflict yes. is the occupation of Israel. Yes. How effective do you think that statement was in putting pressure for Israel? Uh, yeah. Uh I want to be precise on that. Okay. Uh, this is the re uh, the resolution of the uh, General General Assembly of United Nations. Uh, we Indonesia also co-sponsor, support this resolution to open the humanity corridor, mm. to give the necessary supply assistance for the humanitarian there. This resolution have been supported by 120 countries 120 countries. 14 countries against okay 45 abstain this is uh, mm. this very very new uh, i mean it's really uh, interesting that most of the european now uh, they choose abstain mm. oh. okay and then uh, yes this this uh, this this resolution is really hard but my minister working very hard uh, they also condemn that the all violence happened there yeah. and uh, one of them is uh, 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 instead of the the root cause of the problem uh, also uh, to stop the violence this is the yeah. very important mm -hmm. uh, stop violence is very important because it will give uh, room for anybody to so to give uh, necessary assistance to the gaza's people there okay so uh, having uh, hear that and we also hear you know, statements from other world leaders yes. about the dire need of a ceasefire right yes. now. Do you see a ceasefire happening anytime soon, Pak Bagus, from Israel? Uh, like uh, Prime Netanyahu say when they, he met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of America, Anthony Blinken, they said that they always, they always uh, believe that they don't agree with ceasefires. ceasefires. Why? Because this will say that it will give room for mm -hmm. their enemies to regrouping again, okay. to reconsolidate the power. But uh, I think uh, this pressure will be stronger and stronger in the future, and it will give also stronger energy for the Palestinian uh, fighters to, to, to fight back uh, all the attack by the Israeli. It is very difficult to say when will be the ceasefire, but strong pressure will be stronger and stronger and it will make a change. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Inshallah. Yeah. Pak Bagus, previously we were also talking with uh, Pak Yon and Dr. Arif about yes. the humanitarian assistance aid yes. that yesterday uh, government has also already sent the first phase of the humanitarian yes. aid yes. to uh, Gaza. Right, so we would like to also know your view on this humanitarian um, assistance. Yes. Uh, about our contributions, Indonesia contributes yes. contributions to this uh, Palestine and Israel conflict. Please. Yes, this uh, I think around 51.1 ton. Mm -hmm. It consists of uh, food, mm -hmm. uh, medical uh, supply, mm -hmm. some medicine, and also basic needs like uh, tents matras, uh, blankets, and also uh, some like uh, facilities for the wounded people like alcohol, mm -hmm. chlorine, mm -hmm. okay. and everything. So uh, we will do that. Uh, we will we send this because we know that we have discussed with uh, authority in, in, uh, in Egypt who, who will distribute this okay. uh, this uh, donation that they say this is very and uh, very much needed mm -hmm. by the people of the Gazas there because you know the especially the medical yes. uh, equipments. Yeah. Okay. But what do you think of Indonesia's active participations? You know, in Ali, um, in helping alleviate this suffering people impacted yes. by the war. What do you mean? Uh, so, um, how do you see our contributions like? 
Today oh. we are doing like the uh, solidarity actions and yes. through these contributions of the um, humanitarian assistance also. So, yes, I think this is uh, the very real and concrete Indonesians' uh, support for mm -hmm. the Palestine instead of the in, diplo in the diplomatic way. Mm -hmm. and also in the political way we also have to give it uh, in a very concrete uh, support mm -hmm. and fortunately we, uh, we have been also uh, supported by many uh, philanthropic organizations uh, who they have have been worked there uh, for some times and they have uh, more experience on that and based on that cooperation we know what happened on the ground mm -hmm and how we can collect the assistance what is the very much needed what is the priority and what is the uh, the more urgent uh, okay. support or assistance that can we can give we can do it uh, after the one first best two bets to see uh, what is the development on the ground okay now, before the break, we were actually uh, in conversation with Pak Yon and Dr. Arif yes. on what is actually needed to make sure that humanitarian assistance reach the Palestinians yes. safely. Now, Pak Yon, you were saying that actually the idea by the Americans, the humanitarian pause uh, solution, mm -hmm. you think that would not be effective? You think a ceasefire would be more effective? Now, I want to get Dr. Arif also to comment on that. Uh, I mean, based on your knowledge and experience, how can we make sure that all the humanitarian assistance, not just from Indonesia, can actually reach the Palestinians that uh, truly need them? What, what has been the biggest challenge so far? Yeah, the, I, I believe that uh, international uh, agency and also the international humanitarian assistance organization need to uh, voice out their need for this uh, humanitarian corridor. Since the only way to come through Gaza is through Rafa, okay. Rafa crossing. Yeah, from Egypt, right? Yeah. yeah. So we need to coordinate uh, closely with the uh, 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 Egypt Authority. Okay. And uh, then, uh, since uh, from the last two weeks, I believe that the humanitarian help already in long queue at the, uh, in the Rafa crossing. But only two occasions, the uh, opportunity to enter for small amount of uh, uh, international aid. Mm. The situation is getting, getting dire. So okay. uh, the pressure is now is much more needed since the situation inside the Gaza is can different in each hour, not okay. talking on each day. In each hour, there are more and more people injured, even mm. died. The health system is getting close to collapse. Okay. The human, uh, uh, sorry, the medical staff is near burnout. Yeah. So it's a complete disaster situation. So every 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 party should take a uh, ac take action to to push with their own ability. Okay. Now, Bayon, uh, again talking about either ceasefire or humanitarian pause. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said that he rejects the idea of a ceasefire completely until all Israeli hostages are released from Hamas. Maybe you can shed some light on this particular issue uh, that has been, I think, one of the biggest stumbling blocks yeah. between the negotiation between the warring parties. Can you tell us more, Payon? Yeah, uh, what the, to uh, become the attention of the international, uh, in particular the United States, is the uh, how was the um, the hostages? Yeah. How can they bring back the hostages uh, safely? But you cannot bring the hostage safely out to the Gaza by bombarding every time yeah. the Gaza. Mm. Then of course yeah. the the Hamas will not let them out, you know, uh, while the bombarding still there. The probably will happen that. If the Hamas won, the host, they can send the hostages to live with the people. Then they will get, you know, the bombards from the the Israel. So, uh, but the Hamas still protect them. I think this is the issue is the safe of the the hostages. Okay. And the um, when the hostages let to out, it means that ceasefire 
yeah. will be done, the war will be stopped. So if the Benjamin Netanyahu can guarantee that the war will be stopped, then the hostages, I think, will be let out by the, the, the Hamas. Now, we are uh, very hard to predict the, the situation because Netanyahu will not, you know, uh, uh, you know stop the, the war. So the aim is to eliminate all the Hamas. Mm. But if we talk about the Hamas, Hamas is the organization. And one of them are uh, military wings. Okay. So they have the school, they have the social movement, they have the children, they have a uh, woman organization okay. gathering, mosques and other things. So if you eliminate the Hamas, meaning you eliminate almost half of the people. Mm. So this is, I think, the, um, the problem. Then I see that the Net Netanyahu right now still are uh, enjoying his life, you know, mm. because right now when we see probably a couple of months, next couple of months, the, the, uh, his government will end up. Okay. So either they will end up in the jail because the people will wait for, you know, his responsibility and yeah. also the corrupt, you know, issue yeah. that uh, faced by him. So the best way is to, you know, kind of the buying the time. Mm for his kind of maneuvers, you know, yeah. using the, uh, the safety of the Israel, okay. also um, victimize the, the, uh, the Gaza um, uh, people. So I think the best way is the, if the United States want to uh, give great contribution, you know, not to make the United States humiliated by the words, because we don't want the United States become lonely in this issue, the okay. United States, Britain, yeah. and the, the Israel, you know, and stay, live uh, lonely. So they can oppress the, uh, give, you know, very strong oppress to the Netanyahu to yeah. stop, then to save the, the hostages, then make the ceasefire, then let's talk about the future, the, the root cause of the Palestinian and the Israel uh, problem. So this is, I think, will be very good idea because the, the Anthony Blank or Blank can also uh, talk about the the uh, the possibility of the two-state solution right now. Okay. Before we have never heard about this issue. I think mm -hmm. Indonesia always talk about the issue, but other country no voice about the issue. But currently we see that the Blank can already talk mm -hmm. about the possibility to have the two-state solution. So I think this is, you know, almost how we can see the end of the war. Yeah. Okay. It is, will be a uh, good solution or will be very worse uh, solution. Okay. Now, before we talk about the two-state two solution, I also want to bring up uh, a big worry that is circling, especially around netizens in, in the internet. They are saying there is a possibility that this latest clash in Gaza could actually result in an actual world war because of the aggressive military assault done by Israeli that has affected some of its neighbors like Lebanon and Iran. Now, even leaders in Lebanon and mm. Iran are saying if Israeli doesn't hold back, then they will enter the fight as well. What do you make of this, Bayon? Yeah, I think before this thing happened, so we hope that the United States can take the necessary action to stop okay. by... You have to de-escalate. Yeah, escalating. Yeah then give room for the uh, peace talk between the, the, the Israel and the Gaza. If we talk about the peace initiative talk, it means also we need to uh, admit the Hamas. We cannot exclude Hamas. Yeah. Then we want to have the peace, but we exclude Hamas. So this is, I think, another problem. Then, if it is doesn't happen, uh, the you know, escalation continue, the war continue, the Iran won mm -hmm. will uh, intervene you know, yeah. to this uh, battlefield, but uh, there is kind of liar, I think, before the Iran join. The, the first liar is the, the Lebanon okay. and the Yemen. They already oh. uh, uh, about start the war. Okay. If the um, Israel continue to have the take back the, the Yemen or the, the uh, Lebanon, the Iran will intervene through the Lebanon mm. to support the Lebanon and Yemen. The Iran will not enter to the Gaza. Okay. But then will 
uh, widespread, if the, there is provocation, then the war between the, the not only Yemen, uh, Lebanon, and Israel, but also involve the Iran. So I think that Israel are not ready to attack the Iran. Okay. But if they attack the Iran, the China will support the Iran mm -hmm. and the Russia will support the Iran. The China and Russia will not support the Gaza, will not support the Lebanon, but they support the Iran because the China are very dependent on the oil come from the I Iran. See and the Russia have the exchange military supply. The, the Iran give the drone and the Russia give the missile to the, to the okay. Iran. So in this situation, do you think the US will continue the war? Yeah. So if they continue the war, meaning that yes, the third war will begin, but mm. the, 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 uh, the, the impact I think very huge Okay. And yeah, that's why the U.S. try to uh, approach the China okay. to make Iran not to intervene. Mm. But if the U.S. cannot stop the Israel, then probably this situation will happen. Okay. Well, Payon, thank you for yeah. shedding yeah. light on the political constellation <laughs> of all the players in the region. That was very enlightening, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to ask questions to Payon, and perhaps later, yes. Papa Gus could also uh, add your insights on the economic impacts on this conflict war. Uh, getting involved in such conflict war, we know it's costly, right? And Israeli Minister of Economy recently said that Israel spends about around 246 million dollars it's about 3.9 trillion rupiah per day per, per day. day yes <laughs> per day so on the conflict in gaza will it mean that this conflict will end soon then? with economic impact mm, would, yes. would deter israel would that be an issue payon yeah mm. i think it is depend on the how deep and how big the pocket of the <laughs> israel government okay and also the pocket of the united states of america mm. to yeah. support this thing because the United, the the U.S. also face the the economic crisis. Yeah. So if they do, you think they will, you know, support every day, you know, to uh, uh, continue the war? For instance, the the proposal of the budget for the Israel still postponed. That already uh, uh, 14 million U.S. dollar will send to the the Israel, but still, you know, negotiation in this. Uh, situation that people will not allow that you know their money yeah. will be uh, sent for war yeah. okay. that create the the problem of the um, humanity so not only the money will goes for the war then will grab, uh, create the economic problem the business also stop in the israel because during the 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 uh, the um the war there is no business, there is no economic activity. So okay. if they stop for one month, probably, I don't know, two months, then um, how big the, you know, the pocket of the Israel and the uh, United States. And for the Gaza, of, of course, the, the problem was the, the civilians and the, the, uh, the, the um, uh, a missile of the Gaza is very cheap, yeah, comparing to okay. the um, the the, the uh, Israel. So the economic also will push the the both side, you know, to rethinking about uh, continuing the war mm. on or not. So yeah, hope that this thing also will affect uh, because not only within the Israel, within the U.S. also in the regional, and also probably the European also will be affected. or the whole, uh, you know, the globe also will be affected by this. Um, uh, war. So, yeah, hopefully, you know, because of the economic pressure, also, you know, to make the um, the the war, you know, will end uh, soon. But uh, we cannot predict yeah, at this okay. time. All right. Thanks. How about you, Pak Bagus? Uh, according <coughs> to your perspective, would this war in Gaza spill over and destabilize the already very vulnerable and often volatile region? Would it yes. happen? I I will uh, add my your uh, assessment mm -hmm. that for uh, yes it is depend on the pocket okay. and also it depend on the development the progress and the battleground. Mm. 
Yes, you are right. 3.9 trillion every day, and this is a big money, and uh, it will give a psychological pressure, especially for the Israel, because uh, they have a problem internally with the government, and also they have also to be aware 24 hours to to anticipate. Even only one or two rocket coming from Gaza, mm -hmm. but psychologically it will have, it will stress them okay. that they will say that they are not safe anymore. Mm -hmm. And the other way, for the freedom fighters like Hamas and Palestine, they are nothing to lose. They are fighting for their freedom. Mm -hmm. yeah. For them, uh, die is al is always a choice, and if they get the freedom, it will be an additional. Uh, oh. additional yeah. point you know yeah yeah so uh, of course this war is not balanced mm. uh, this is not a tradition uh, conventional war this is the war between the guerrilla and the with the regular soldier and up to now we it's almost one month I think it's one month now mm. uh, Seven no October. Seven October, Seven October, October yes? yeah. yeah okay yeah. almost one month, almost one month. Uh, no significant progress from the yeah. Israel. Yeah. Uh, they say that Hamas is always uh, only a guerrilla or something like that, but yeah. factually, mm -hmm. up to now, they cannot solve this problem. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, this war will be uh, more complicated in the future because uh, in my observation that Hamas will change their, 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 their style of war. Okay. They don't want to confront it uh, uh, very close, but yeah. they will do like all the guerrillas wars, hit and run, and they, they know better the Gaza than the Israeli yeah. soldier. This okay. is the first. The second is about the regional. Yes, I think uh, maybe it will, de it will uh, influence the, the scale of conflict in the neighboring countries between Israel and Israel in Lebanon, Israel and Syria, Israel uh, yeah, and with Jordan, Egypt, yes, there is no war, but the unconvenience atmosphere have been made now. The, the level of trust is mm. getting lower. Mm. And uh, what can we do? Uh, like Egypt now, they are facing very serious uh, situation that if there are many people coming to the Egypt. It will make their economics more difficult because yeah. this they have, they have to protect all the mm -hmm. refugees coming mm -hmm. there. So uh, it will it will create a ramification mm -hmm. on the problem. Uh, this is the, the the issue, and it's more and, and more difficult for Israel to face because they are facing now the what we call it the group, you know, like okay. Hezbollah. Yeah. Hamas and, mm. and they, yeah. they have to fight. They can they can come up everywhere, any place. Yeah. Uh, uh, for me, the, the 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 solution should be a very fair and uh, very transparent uh, discussions uh, in, uh, involving key countries like Egypt, Jordan, okay. and then uh, yes, uh, America okay. to see to find out the transparent solution and the root of this is the independence of the Palestine. Okay. Uh, the two-state solution is always the ultimate uh, destination for that. All right. All right, Siska, we will come back later to our yes. discussions, but now let's have a look on the current situations. The latest update from Monas. Ba Elvi, kita daulat untuk maju membacakan puisi dan artis-artis selebriti -artis semuanya ada di sini untuk menemani. Silakan, Ba Elvi. Bisa tenang, tenang. Okay. Yang di depan, yang di depan semuanya duduk, duduk, duduk. Semuanya ingin melihat artis kita semua. Bisa tertib? 
Bisa tertib. Kita tertib semuanya. Ayo duduk, duduk di depan, duduk. Do, 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 do. Iya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Saya Helvi Tiana Rosa akan membacakan puisi yang baru saya tulis pagi ini di Monas berjudul Anak-anak Gaza. Yeah, not only seeing actually politicians, governments attending this event, but we also see some celebrities as well. Right? Yes, Today, a lot of celebrities. Else. Actually, for the past month since the attack happened, we we see a lot of chatter online, mm. in social media, even mm. between celebrities. Yes. There's also been some sort of like a fight, you know, between mm -hmm. people. Pro yeah, for and con. Yeah. yeah, it's been really interesting to watch it and to see how how people have so much heart when it comes, you know, to the struggle of Palestinians. Now let's continue our yeah. conversation. Yes. Now we've been uh, hearing a lot of insights from Pak Yon and Pak Bagus. Now I want to go back to Dr. Arif. After speaking of all those challenges and obstacles and issues that uh, might arise during this conflict how do you see that how do you see that in relation to assisting humanitarian uh, aid to the people in palestine like you know treating the wounds giving uh, food supplies maybe you could also give some insights on how are, how is the mood of the actual people who live in gaza strip when it comes to the options that they have between Cease fire, humanitarian pause, or keep on just staying there no matter what happens. Because we hear that a lot of residents in Gaza, mm -hmm. although they were told by Israeli to evacuate immediately, they opted to stay put uh, in their homes. Maybe you can shed some yeah. light more about the they actual already, situation. They already experienced this situation since 2007. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, when the uh, Israeli leave Gaza and then after that the Gaza's under siege. Yes. So since that, the uh, situation inside Gaza is uh, happened to maybe to set under standard, mm. substandard. So everything is substandard. Okay. You cannot live in luxury. Mm. In, med in medication, in uh, in education, in uh, social economic, they live in substandard uh, uh, level. Yeah. Okay. So it's quite uh, shocking when we first come inside Gaza okay. uh, as a doctor. Yeah. We see their hospital, we see their system, we see their how they take care of the patient. It's okay. like we see a 10 years back. Mm. Mm. Okay? Okay. You, you, you cannot see a luxury car, you cannot see a fancy building there because they always live under attack in each day. Okay. But the psychologist of the people yeah. is still a very, very ready to fight back. You, you, never, you never find people who just sit down and uh, waiting for uh, whatever happened, happened. Okay. Even when I'm talking about, uh, uh, when I'm talking with one of the family, uh, they say that we already know. In Gaza, we already know our names already written in bullets. Mm. So, mm. if your name is not on the bullet, mm. you will live tomorrow. Mm. But if your name already on the bullet, you, may, you might be dying. At the same time, the situation is, I said, more lively than other just after the ceasefire a man taking his uh, painter okay. and paint his house mm. just after and i'm talking to him father you just you just passed the war situation how come you you did the most like uh, a mundane thing, an yeah. inconsequential thing to do when I you just went you, through you something so horrific. It's mm. more important you maybe you put your belonging. Uh, you yeah yeah. He 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 talking to me. My plan to paint my house already 
already scheduled before oh. the attack. So this day is the most suitable since I don't know where, when, tomorrow my house is still intact. So oh. they believe the, the day that God gave them is the most uh, miraculous day. So they should enjoy every day in their life. So, when the uh, authority tell that the uh, school is stopped, it's closed because of the attack, uh, the children didn't go to school. But whenever they announce in mouse, in the, uh, with or whatever the information can spread, the children at the morning go to the hospital they attend to. And they know whoever their friends is missing because in the each table when the boy or the girl sit at the, okay. at the place, when the teacher put a rose at the table, it means that the student mm. has died. Mm. Okay, so right. what you just explained is like really saddening but also inspirational at the yeah. same time. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can say that most than other people in the world, Palestinians, especially Gazanians, right now are the people who actually live in the present, mm. who actually truly savor and appreciate the present moment because that's mm. all they have yeah. for now. Yeah. Okay. But so we're going to continue our conversation. We're going to get more insights, of course. We're going to be talking about this two-state solution. Yes. Uh, and of course, to get more updates from the Wona Square. But now we're going to take a short break, but we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Still watching breaking news on TV RI World with me, Siska Becker, and my partner Stephanie Silitonga, who will now deliver you some reports that is also related to our main issue today. Uh, we stand with Palestine, Stephanie. Right. So, uh, countries around the world continues with its rally in support of Palestine and in Gaza. We've compiled reports on rallies at number of countries across the globe, such as in Sydney, Australia, and also Dublin, Ireland. Let's take a look. Humanitarian supplies entering Gaza Strip from Egypt are far from sufficient. A UN official has complained so on Thursday. Head of UN Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs in the Occupied Palestinian Territory, or OCHA Opt, Andrea De Domenico, said there are some positive signs for humanitarian situation in Gaza as the first batch of injured Palestinian civilians and foreign passport holders managed to arrive in Egypt through Rafah crossing. So we've been asking and, and negotiating with the parties for, for many days, as you can imagine. Uh, even some of our staff need to be rotated. We need some people that has been under bombing for so many weeks out and some other in. Of course, the wounded is, is you know, you can imagine the current status of health facilities and hospitals in Gaza um, with all the difficulties to bring new medicines and supplies. So the, the evacuation of the wounded is one of the first steps that, that we, we have to push for and we are very happy that this is happening actually. 
um, I'm optimistic that this is a good sign and a sign in a good direction that we will allow uh, some, uh, some Palestinians, some dual citizens to get out uh, and allow us also to, as I said earlier, scale up our operations so we can better serve the, the Palestinian civilians in Gaza. According to Domenico, despite the latest progress, Palestinian people in Gaza overall are increasingly desperate due to the lack of shelter and essential supplies. Although some trucks have entered Gaza from Egypt, the supply they delivered are far from being sufficient, he stressed. All right, let's get back to our discussion. So, Dr. Arif, you also mentioned about the conditions that is like a very traumatic and very actually horrifying as well there, right, the conditions. But previously, you also mentioned about there is this like very limited perhaps like supplies for medicines, aid and everything. So we would like to know if um, the paramedics, doctors, they're also like prioritize like a particular or certain conditions of the people there, how they treat the patients because you also mentioned about like the very limited, very standard or very limited conditions. Yeah. Uh, for extreme situation uh, like now, uh, it could be that the, the, the doctor could uh, do the uh, minor uh, surgery mm -hmm. without anesthesia. Or wow, really? Yeah. Back to medieval mm. times, back yeah. to uh, before yeah. anesthesia. And uh, since all the beds inside the hospitals full, mm. uh, they will send the patient back to their home. It's available before the patient fully recover. Okay. So mm. let's say that for uh, this case, maybe the patient need for a week mm. uh, to recover in hospital. But since this bed also needed by other most a uh, more critical patient so this patient will be delivered home so this critical patient could be treated there so in medical term uh, the doctor will do the triage to prioritize the most mm. critical patient to okay. uh, to have uh, the uh, treatment mm. and it's truly sometimes it's truly uh, not appropriate mm -hmm. okay since it's like a doctor choose who will die. Yeah. But in this certain situation, this kind of action is needed to prevent the worst yeah. uh, condition. I mean, without triage, uh, if we have two critical patients, we have triad, might be the, the two patients died. But we try it, we can save one patient and uh, with all respect, maybe to let this uh, more critical patient die. Okay, so exactly like in a war situation, mm -hmm. that is what needed to make sure that you can save as many people as possible. That's correct. Right? Now, Dr. Arif, in our previous reporting, we showed that statement from UN officials who also have uh, stated that there's a really short supply of uh, really basic needs for the Palestinians. Maybe you can also share with us, based on your yeah. experience, about the short of supply and everything that has been uh, challenging for your team to make sure you can assist the Palestinians yeah. as well as you can. Since they know that they are in the uh, war situation, uh, they already prepare for everything. Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, buffer stock. Mm. Okay. Uh, in a uh, medical system, we have buffer stock. I mean, if you need 10, you will add it maybe 30% as a buffer stock. So in, mm. uh, in the uh, incident happen, disaster happen, you still have 30% to back you up. In Gaza, their buffer stock is higher than 30%, even double, even triple. Because they know if something happened, the war situation was they will trap inside without mm. any help from outside. Mm. So they will use their own buffer stock to manage inside the condition. Okay. But after nearly one month, the buffer stock is already okay. It's okay. depleted now, yeah. not, not enough buffer stock. Yeah, the depleted to, to buffer stock, so they need uh, 
fresh uh, item from outside. Mm -hmm. So the international aid waiting at the Rafa is necessarily okay. have to prioritize to enter the Gaza Strip. Okay. Now that we have Pak Bagus here, mm -hmm. we've heard from Ibu Retno and also President Joko Widodo yesterday that the aid that's coming in now will not be the first aid. More batch of aid will yes. be coming in. Yeah. And maybe the people will also get involved in the second batch, Pak Bagus, uh, as we see at the first aid. It's not only from the government. A lot of social organizations also took place. Maybe Dr. Arif could enlighten us in telling Pak Bagus and our viewers, everybody, what is actually really needed in Gaza right now in terms of humanitarian assistance? Well, uh, logistic for the civilian, logistic for the medical supplies, and also medical team to medical replace team. the medical okay. staff who already work for uh, a month without rest. Mm. So okay. uh, we owe the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Pak uh, Bagus, uh, particularly to uh, assist us. Whenever uh, we send our medical team to Gaza, we always coordinate with Pak Bagus okay. and the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs. So we are really appreciate of that uh, coordination with the uh, 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 Indonesian authority. And again, I must, uh, I must stress that without this uh, prompt action, okay. the uh, disastrous condition regarding the, uh, the winter they are facing now is, mm. uh, could not be imagined yeah. how the catastrophic situation will be. Yeah, because they have no electricity, mm -hmm. so they have That's no right. heater, That's right. and uh, nothing to keep them warm, right? Yeah, no Even power supply, like, yeah. Okay. Uh, and you also mentioned uh, Dr. Arif uh, previously a little bit, I think it was off camera, but I think maybe you can also uh, tell us now about how sometimes the bureaucracy of the shipment of the aid uh, made it that it's very hard to match the needs mm. of the civilians with the actual shipment that is delivered. There's maybe some foul play, some yeah, yeah. psychological yeah. war in hand. Please tell us more about that. Yeah, uh, the condition when I'm was there uh, sometimes is uh, cannot be imaginable uh, regarding the the uh, the aid that coming through Gaza uh, for example when the uh, winter are uh, coming in Gaza uh, they need blanket they need a uh, heater they need okay. uh, some sort of item to keep them comfort yeah. but uh, in return what coming from the Rafa crossing is not blanket and et cetera, et cetera. It's other. Mm -hmm. uh, and for other situations, uh, like when the uh, Gaza are entering the summer situation, they need fresh water, mm -hmm. they need uh, maybe uh, fluid supply. But again, the, uh, the aid coming is not what they need. Mm -hmm. So it's like a scenario that uh, to put the people in Gaza is live, live in a uh, substandard okay. uh, without they uh, them have the fully uh, 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 what they need at the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, must be tricky uh, then yes. to tricky, yeah. make sure they can make the most of the shipment, whether it's actually beneficial or not. But mm -hmm. they have to do what what well with do what they have. Uh, but Bagus, uh, maybe you can also help us understand about the collaboration. Uh, be, between the government agencies because we know that the shipment yesterday was uh, compiled by the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Agriculture as well, yes. and with social organizations. Now hearing from Dr. Arif that actually medical supplies are what very superbly needed and even medical teams would actually help mm -hmm. the, the, the ground team there on Gaza. Would it be possible to collaborate more uh, with the Ministry of Health in this matter? <coughs> yes. Uh According to my experience, that this is a little bit uh, delicate issues, okay. uh, because uh, because of the lack of the information mm. and and some and for some extent also lack of experience. Okay. Uh, that's why before we s send our uh, donations, uh, we are working very closely with uh, our colleague from in our embassy in Cairo. Yeah. And they will as they will transmit us our communication with we call it uh, Egyptian Red Crescent mm -hmm. okay. and also UN UNRWA. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. This is the United Nation uh, for the Refugees Work Agency, uh, yeah. agency especially for okay. Palestine. We always also we we have made also a Zoom meeting okay. uh, between us and with them, facilitated by our colleague in Embassy in Cairo. So by this communication, we try to mitigate, to 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 mitigate as far as possible what the need and what the what we have and what the need. Okay. For instance, uh, like in medicine. Uh, the problem is always uh, the the our medicine is always written in Indonesian language, you know, okay. and they always read read in Arabic. Right. <laughs> this is the problem also. Okay. The second is about the duration of the medicine. Mm. Uh, learning from uh, before another experience that some of medicine is not really connected with the problem, mm. like diabetic mm -hmm. uh, medicine, cholesterol. Mm. Okay. Uh, this is not very urgent and during mm. in the, this. Yeah, in, this, in this situation. Yes, yeah, in this situation. <laughs> that's why uh, we always we, we have sent our list to them, and they and they will correct it. They will uh, what we call it uh, assess. Okay. This is okay. This is not. This is possible. This is not. So, after that, we will uh, uh, a big adjustment. And we tell our colleague from the philanthropic organization that look, we need this, 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 something like that. Especially um, like uh, oxygen tube. Yeah. This is this is extremely sensitive not item. permitted. <laughs> sensitive yeah. item oh. to oh. come. This is yeah. very sensitive. Why? Because uh, before they go to Rafa crossing, they will inspect it by some of them is from the Israeli government. They're always afraid that this thing will be used mm, as, as a weapon. As weapon. Yeah. <laughs> The second is about the solar panel. Okay. You know, solar panel is very important during yeah. this situation because uh, of the destruction of the electricity. Yeah. But it is not permitted. The mm. second, the third is uh, fuel. Mm -hmm. They are, they don't receive fuel. Why? Because fuel yeah. will be used for the war. Mm. But but yeah. in fact, fuel is really 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 needed by the yeah. hospital, by the yeah. uh, uh, office. So this. Sometimes uh, we have to make some adjustment, but not really uh, match with our faith. Okay. But we have to do that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, like but Dr. Arif said, that we always make coordination with many philanthropists coming to cross to to Rafa. Yeah. The problem is now they are backlog in the border. Mm. Many uh, trucks waiting yeah. coming inside. And always uh, now it's bet better with than other now 50 truck every day or no yeah. before it's 20 mm -hmm. it's not enough far enough that's why we have to also to reconsider the donation it should be uh, durable okay. you know uh, if we put a medicine that all have expired date or sensitive with the climate we they put it in the warehouse is <laughs> no aircon and uh, no. Mm -hmm hot and uh, yeah. very hot and sometimes raining and something yeah. it will destroy the material of the medicine so this okay. is uh, we have to uh, yeah. try to mitigate as far as possible that our uh, donation could be very uh, useful for the recipient of course this is not far from the ideal yeah but we try to do that yeah, okay. A lot of logistical challenges. Mm. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. This is uh, yes. Mm. non tec very technical, but yeah. really challenging. Yeah. yeah. Correct. <laughs> I'd like to ask questions in regards to the UN yes. mechanism in settling this conflict. Perhaps yes. I'll go to Pa um, Bagus first, and then perhaps later Pa Yon could also mm -hmm. give your additional thoughts on this. Um, so, is it really effective amidst the veto power owned by a limited number by? extremely powerful big countries that will at any time block any UN resolutions particularly when the agreed resolutions are about to impose sanctions on Israel yes we can say yes or no okay we can say yes if there is uh, some resolution which is really urgent and very uh, important to stop or to influence Israel to stop their actions, it will be always fail because of the vetoes mm -hmm. from some countries. But in some side, in uh, another side, 
it could be also in some uh, extent give advantage because uh, at the there is some meeting I am not mistaken that the resolution to to condemn all the Palestinian to withdraw from the all the uh, the area and they have to uh, give all the uh, a weapon everything but it will also veto by mm. some the the key the, the, the key countries uh, that uh, not uh, that not favor with this uh, resolution okay. what can I say that uh, this veto should really is uh, the legacy of the World War II, yeah. which is not suitable enough with this situation. Okay. That's why many countries need to restructure mm. the, the United Nations uh, mechanism to give to reflect more uh, comprehensive situation with the now the situation yeah. in today. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, like uh, we uh, Germany, Japan, Brazil. When some people say also Indonesia mm -hmm. is uh, eligible okay. to have some kind of this uh, privilege. During the World War II, maybe Japan and Germany is the losing state. They, they yes. are, they, they, but now uh, they are now uh, play very important roles. Japan, mm -hmm. Korea, yeah. uh, India, Brazil, more. There are more okay. people. Uh, that's mm -hmm. why, uh, let's say that this. That's why uh, my minister used the mechanism in the General Assembly. Okay. This is more democratic, one foot, mm. one country. Okay. And yes, this is not binding, yeah. but it will give uh, strong psychological and moral power yeah. to the country to, give, to do more based on their capability to help the Palestinian people. Okay. It's the best platform in diplomacy yes. right yes. now at the moment. Okay. Now, before we return to the discussion, we're now going to go to Shafira Junior, okay. who's ready to update us on the current situation of the rally. Shafira, please tell us where are you now and what is the situation? Hello, Siska and Stephanie. I'm still here at uh, the outside area of Monument of National Monument or Monas. And now, uh, after the after the uh, after 10 a.m., uh, actually there are uh, some people who already uh, going outside the area of the demonstration of the rallies. And behind me, we can see that uh, there are still uh, some some people here there are still some crowd here and also we uh, we still see uh, the slogans uh, with uh, with messages with artworks um, uh, express the uh, express and voicing um, their uh, their awareness uh, to you know to spread uh, the humanity and to end the genocide in Gaza and also um, here uh, Siska and Stephanie. Um, actually, there are uh, the area of the uh, the area of Monas. Before it was closed uh, due to the demonstration, but now uh, uh, it's uh, it's slowly open to the public. Uh, we can see there are some vehicles passing this area also, and also uh, Stephanie and Siska. Um, what I see and what I've observed uh, here at the sit at the uh, location and uh, in this on the situation, um, I I can I can uh, feel the the messages uh, that are um, delivered by the people of Indonesia by the community here. They are um, they are here uh, voicing their. Uh, they they care and they also they also want to uh, you know spread the awareness and also uh, there uh, because there are some families here uh, who bring the younger uh, the younger generations in their families uh, I can see that they are trying to to pass uh, this this kind of event this kind of um, understanding that there are. Uh, an issue going out there and there are children there the people there uh, that um, that can't even sleep or eat well and 
here uh, the families uh, try to uh, teach uh, teach them how to be um, grateful and how to uh, have the sense of empathy for uh, our uh, uh, our sisters and and brother uh, and brothers there and uh, also Stephanie and Siska uh, there is still um, a message that I will expl uh, I will explain again I will deliver again uh, that we don't need to be a Muslim we don't need to be a Palestinian we just need to be human to support and to understand what is going on I'm Safira Junior from Dimona Square with the camera person Arya reporting for TVRI World back to you there Siska and Stephanie Right, thank you, Shafira Jr. for your report. So, Siska, we can see actually the empathy, the caring is actually really contagious to people, not only those who are attending um, the mass rally today, but also we hope it will be, you know, like for other people as well, right? Of course. And it's actually quite fun to see uh, that it's becoming such a family event. You know, they're enjoying Sunday together. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And I think it will boost the local economy around Monas area yeah. as well. So hopefully everybody can have fun, but please stay safe, everyone, as we show our solidarity with uh, Palestine. Now, continue with our conversation. Pak Yon, I would love to get your response on what uh, Bagus just said earlier about the relevance of the UN. Do you agree with that assessment that the UN mechanism, maybe especially the Security Council, yes. is actually outdated and it needs an overhaul so it can fit the current global landscape better? What do you think, Pak Yon? Yeah. <coughs> I think we, we have to understand the changing of the our global situation, the development of the countries, yeah. just not to rely on the past experience, in particularly after the uh, Second World uh, War, yeah. that the, the winner of the Second World War will manage control this earth. So we need to have the new order that, mm -hmm. you know, give kind of the uh, the equal right equal not only the privilege for the certain people for the great power mm -hmm. but in fact the reality is the great power do not perform the great job mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we have to correct we have okay. to reform this is kind of you know our critique to the great power yeah. as long as you can uh, guarantee and give the justice because you have the great power then this is fine but if you use your great power your veto to legitimize the the injustice to legitimize the war okay. then this is the problem so the the um the, the security council i think need to be restored so of course we can rely on the general assembly at this uh, issue but for this um consideration uh, the, 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 the country, the state that have the right, you know, to live in safe, you know, to make sure that the, the human right also protected okay. very well. So, yeah, we have to share those responsibilities, okay. not only for those country, but the whole country have the same responsibility on this issue. In particular, if we see the issue of the the, the war between the, the Palestinian yeah. and the, um, the Israel. This is yeah. the, the real case, I think, that we can okay. examine. All right. Now, to go back to the conflict between Israel and Palestine, you've mentioned, Bayon, that there's been many instances uh, throughout the years of how global communities and world leaders have tried to put both parties in the negotiation table. We see the Camp David Accord and the Oslo Accord. The 1993 Oslo Accord, agreed by Israel and Palestine, have actually drawn a peace settlement uh, of the Palestine-Israel conflict and also uh, putting forward this two-state solution. Now, as we learned throughout the years, uh, there's been some stumbling blocks in the two-state <coughs> solution. The issue of the status of Jerusalem, and about the border and the right of return. It seems for both parties they are very mm. adamant in their position and it seems to be unnegotiable. Now, how can we achieve a compromise and finally realizing this two-state solution if, you know, the particles from both parties mm -hmm. are immovable uh, by any chance? Yeah, of course we need to transform the conflict, you know, okay. in the reality, become the more rational, not based on the ideological position there 
uh, value each other because they have their own value then they will stand for their value but if we want to reach the resolution so we need to transform those conflicts what the people really uh, feel about the conflict it is this conflict we need to keep for the long time or we need to change so okay. through this transform the conflict into something that give the future peace both to the israel and the palestinian i think will be um better you know um uh, to understand because the um we need also to ask either both party need or peace or need a war so if they are uh, very much you know concerned about you know uh, the very uh, significant to promote the peace then we can go together to reach the peace for us uh, and the oslo 1993 yeah. that initiated by the uh, the plo and the uh, isaac rabin at that time yeah. this is not easy task because this is mm. also caused the the death of the isaac rabin after yeah. signed the, uh, the 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 peace Accord, yeah, yeah because some of the conservative radical groups yeah in israel mm -hmm. did not want to have the peace mm -hmm. then they started the uh, uh the the Yisak rabin okay after one year i think they got the 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 nobel prize of the peace yeah Yisak rabin and uh arafat yes yeah, arafat. Arafat. so who are now there to you know hold the peace in israel mm -hmm. if the consequent is you know the the possibility uh, to die so we need a very strong figure that believe okay. in peace not believe in war to solve the problem okay. unfortunately the netanyahu still believe on war to solve the problem Okay. He dis doesn't give any room for negotiation, so that's yeah. why the Palestinians try to have mm -hmm. the resistance. Do you think the Hamas also will, you know, accept the the peace deal? I think if the room is open, they okay. can accept the the uh, the uh, the deal mm -hmm. because the stigma always that the Hamas is terrorist. Yeah. Hamas doesn't want to have the you know the peace. Hamas. Mm -hmm. yeah, want to remove the, the whole of the entire israel but if we see the israel also you know do the same things yeah. so the israel change the hamas change then we mm. can transform the conflict into the the the, uh, the more you know uh, futuristic uh, achievement so um this uh, i hope this the the war become very uh, good yeah, listen Okay. not only for the both you know uh, nations that you know involved in this conflict but also the whole uh, uh, country in this uh, to, un to understand what the really happened and come back to the uh, root cause you know of this conflict this is the occupation yeah. and the give the independent to the uh, people who want the independent and withdraw the the occupier from mm -hmm. the occupied land then the uh, uh, the uh, international forum united nation will pay and to you know to manage this thing if there are kind of the understanding both uh, side and we hope the united states will you know try to revise you know okay. their uh, role and give contribution to the peace not only give you know blind support to the israel okay then other country also will follow you know to give a uh, kind of the uh, future uh, peace in uh, this, uh, this this region i okay. think yeah thank you pak yon for that comprehensive yeah. analysis and assessment yeah. later we'll ask pak bagus as yeah. well about his opinion about the two-state solution but uh, stephanie i think you have some news to report first to our viewers right it's been four weeks after the October 7 assault by Hamas-led Palestinian militants and subsequent retaliatory strikes by the Israeli military forces that there is no sign the violent conflict will end soon. The longer the conflict and the suffering will be endured by both warning parties, the immediate ceasefire and commitment to bring the conflict back to the table is key to resolve it.
An armed conflict between Hamas-led Palestinian militant groups and Israeli military forces began on October 7, 2023, with a Hamas attack on southern Israel that killed 1,400 Israelis. Israeli military forces responded with retaliatory strikes against Palestine's Gaza Strip, killing over 8,000 people, including more than 3,000 children, and an invasion of Gaza. The current conflict, which the Israel government declares as a war, is the fiercest since 1973 Yom Kippur War and the Fifth War in the Gaza Strip. A total of 6,000 bombs were dropped by Israel during the first six days of the conflict, more than the amount used by the United States over an entire year of operations in Afghanistan and double the number of bombs employed by US-led coalition against ISIS over one month. Fears of a humanitarian crisis have heightened since Israel cut off food, water, electricity and fuel supplies to Gaza, which had already been blockaded by both neighboring Egypt and Israel. Israel urged 1.1 million Gazans to evacuate northern Gaza, while Hamas called on residents to stay in their homes. The UN reported that around a million Palestinians, nearly half of Gaza's population, have been internally displaced. The history of Israeli-Palestinian conflict traces back to the late 19th century, when Zionists sought to establish a homeland for the Jewish people in Ottoman-controlled Palestine, a region roughly corresponding to the land of Israel in Jewish tradition. The Balfour Declaration of 1917, issued by the British government, endorsed the idea of a Jewish homeland in Palestine, which led to an influx of Jewish immigrants to the region. Following the Second World War and the Holocaust, international pressure mounted for the establishment of a Jewish state in Palestine, leading to the creation of Israel in 1948. The establishment of Israel and the war that followed and preceded it led to the displacement of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians who became refugees, sparking a decades-long conflict between Israel and Palestinian people. The Palestinians seek to establish their own independent state in at least a part of historic Palestine. Israeli defense of its own borders, control over the West Bank, the Egyptian-Israeli blockade of Gaza Strip and Palestinian internal politics currently make the search for an end of the conflict to be out of reach. The prolonged conflict has not only killed thousands of people from both Israel and Hamas-controlled Gaza, but also drained each of them financially. Its impacts on Gaza have been disastrous, not only on the number of casualties, but also on the livelihood of Gazans, whose residents have been flattened to the ground due to the Israeli bombardment. As for Israel, apart from the casualties, the conflict has cost it dearly. With Israeli Finance Minister Bezalel Smotrich recently announcing that Israel spends about $246 million a day on the conflict in Gaza. Globally, ever since the outbreak of the Israeli-Hamas crisis, oil prices have risen about 6%. But as the war wages on and as Israel's military expands its ground activity in Gaza, oil prices have been on rising spree in the last two weeks. The World Bank urges that a prolonged Israel-Hamas conflict risks a repeat of the 1970s oil price crisis. It issued a warning on Monday that a further escalation of tensions in the Gaza Strip with potential spillover into a wider Middle East conflict might result in oil prices skyrocketing by more than 75%. Under the worst-case scenario, should key producers such as Saudi Arabia cut supplies, this might lead to oil prices reaching an all-time high of 157 US dollars per barrel. Experts have called for immediate ceasefire to end the suffering, particularly on the Gazan Palestinians, and to prevent the conflict from bringing the broader global community into a multiple crisis. They have also called for the return of the conflicting parties onto the table, 
with a two-state solution produced in 1993 are slow accords reached between the Israeli government and the Palestine Liberation Organization or PLO as the most viable resolve to the prolonged conflict. Both Israel and Palestine need to stop blaming each other every time a conflict erupts. It is like seeking answer to a tricky question. Which came first? The chicken or the egg? Welcome back to our TVR World in Breaking News today. And we already had so many insights from our expert speakers today, right, Siska? Indeed, Stephanie. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't realize that three hours have three passed hours. actually since we started the breaking news. Indeed. So, sadly, this is the time where we end the show. But before that, we would like to get closing statements from our guests. Pak Bagus, maybe you can also add your response to uh, what Pak Yon said earlier. But the two-state solution, is it still viable as an option? Is it still relevant with the current situation? And uh, along with the closing statement for Indonesia's position in standing with Palestine. Yes. Uh, for this two-state solution, this is the ultimate uh, destination we have to pursue. Okay. Because uh, this is the best they can reach how to solve this conflict. When they make it uh, the beginning of uh, 1990s, after Oslo, Madrid, yeah. everything, there is a big hope, optimism, among all the uh, among the relevant parties to reach this agreement. Unfortunately, when the time is going, it goes and goes more and more difficult. Mm. I still remember one of the Arab kings uh, in 2004, I think, yeah. they said that if Israel receive these two state solutions, and we will recognize the, the state of Israel. Mm. But with the time passing and also the passing of uh, Yasser Arafat in 2004, it looks the future is so gloomy. Mm. Uh, and mostly, because there is no strong intention from Israel's side how to reach this okay. goal. That's why now uh, most people seem to go back again to looks like they're dispirited with this uh, situation. Okay. Uh, they have to fight to reach this, uh, this, this, this goal. That's why we, uh, Indonesia always say that we always, like my missus stay, to support the dependence of Palestine okay. and always go to the basic agreement to make the two-state solution as the final goal okay. to solve this uh, conflict. And also based on the East Jerusalem is the capital of the Palestine. Okay. Back to the line of the 1967. Mm. Uh, comply with the international parameters yeah. that has been recognized by the United Nations. This is the very important message. Okay. It, if Israel or all the parties uh, agree with that, uh, I think this conflict will be finished, will be over. Okay. Uh, I think the, this conflict will, will be the game changer mm -hmm. according to my okay. uh, observation that in the future, it will make a different uh, vision to see the conflict in Middle East. Like Mr. Pa Yon said, that this conflict should include all the necessary parties. Okay. In this case, also Hamas. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Yeah. Uh, the conflict now is not between the countries, but between the group. The, 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 the fighters group. Okay. This should be addressed properly. Mm. And in the future, Palestine question will be always in the middle of the uh, issue of the peace in the Middle East. If it is not solved, uh, it will make the situation be getting worse. Okay. In Indonesia, we will always support 
the 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 the, the independent struggle of the Palestine. Mm -hmm. We always support how to make the cap uh, capability to to improve the capability of the Palestine to manage their countries, and uh, we will never uh, because this is the the message from the. Uh, Asian African countries 1955. Yeah. Now, as only Palestine mm -hmm. is not free, and we will fight for this freedom. This is uh, our message. Okay. Thank you, Pak Bagus. <laughs> and moving on to Dr. Arif, you can give us the closing statements from Mercy's perspective on the latest situation in Gaza and how Indonesia can uh, still be uh, a strong partner to the Palestine yeah. struggle. As a part of a uh, humanitarian relief organization worldwide, uh, we're demanding that the humanitarian corridor is open as soon as possible, not only to manage the current situation, but to prevent the most catastrophic situation yeah. that the people in Gaza are facing right now. So we are not talking only about the uh, martyr, the injured, but we are talking about around 2 million people there. And we asked to all the uh, leaders of the world to take a step aside a little bit from the uh, political aspect. Mm -hmm. We now feel a human problem, humanity problem in the Middle East, especially in Palestine. So let us now to prove ourselves as human, help our uh, brother, uh, and sister in Palestine and after that you can continue your uh, discussion regarding the political issue or whatever you like. Thank you. Okay, thank you Dr. Arif. Ayon, after seeing that yeah. huge rally in Mona Square, after hearing everything that we've discussed so far, your closing statement Ayon to close up our program yeah. today. Uh, let me quote the, the poem of the, uh, our Minister of Foreign Affairs. Then mm. she said that the children has no homes. Mm. Children, you know, only have the um, sky. sky as their roof, as their roof yeah. and the earth as their uh, mattress, you know, to sleep. And the only thing that they have, I think, is the land. Mm. So please don't let the kind of forced displacement of the people of the Palestinian because this is the only thing that they have and I saw also that the um, the Britain already considered that try to avoid any kind of forced uh, displacement even though the the scenario of the Israel to empty the Gaza so this is very bad situation if they want to empty the Gaza uh, ask the, all the international country to take the Gaza as the refugee, as the uh, Ramban Barak, yeah? uh, the Knesset said, as the uh, former uh, vice, the Mossad said that Gaza people now already in refuge. So please the international country to take at least 10 or 20 big country can take all the Gaza to be put in their country. So this is, I think, not the uh, solution. So the only solution is if the problem is the land, so give the independence to the Palestinian country. Bring the peace talk after the ceasefire uh, to the, on the table. And uh, remember that the peace is between Palestinian and Israel, not between Israel and the Arab country. Okay. And forget the Palestinian. Normalization is between Israel mm. and the Palestinian, not between the Israel and other country, and forgetting the Palestinian. So I think this is very essential, and all countries I think are responsible to achieve this uh, kind of effort to have the permanent, uh, permanent peace in this region. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pa Yon Mahmoudi, PhD, Head of Middle Eastern and Islamic Program at the University of Indonesia. Thank you, Pak Bagus Hendraning Kobarshi, Director for Middle Eastern Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, to Dr. Arif Rahman, Member and Presidium of Mercy Indonesia. Gentlemen, thank you, thank thank you. you so much 
for sharing yeah, with us so oh, much of your time you. and you your much. expertise. Thank you. We appreciate you. your being here with us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And that's the end of our breaking news for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Please stay tuned to TV RI World to get more updates from the latest situation in Gaza, Palestine. I'm Siska Becker. And I'm Stephanie Silitonga. Thanks for watching. Take care and goodbye.